Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm so excited to show you this game. I will do videos on my tournament games as well. This was just a pickup game, but it was a lot of fun, and so I wanted to show it to you. My opponent was upward, and we rolled for sides, and they rolled shadow. So they're playing shadow, I'm playing free. We're not using any tokens because they preferred no tokens, and also a lot of the tournament games are without tokens, so I'm happy to get back in the practice of no tokens, and quite honestly, the game is still very well balanced, even with no tokens. So, um, all right, so here's our opening rolls. My opponent allocated one eye, rolled one more, and then got four musters. It's always nice to see those early musters. And I got quite a few musters and will of the west so if i had a palantir i would play king brand's men with the palantir to draw two cards but i'm still happy to see this it's a it's a great card and helps me defend do which is dale erebor woodland realm and my opponent got worn with sorrow and toil which is a great early card can put a lot of pressure on the fellowship and shadows moving great to see swarm of bats early because then you can potentially cancel out an early scouts from free people. So I don't love a bunch of musters, but given that my opponent doesn't have super fast army movement, I should be able to defend maybe the elves, get the elves close to war. It means an early witch king, but it also means stronger elven strongholds. All right, so... I start off by passing, no reason to give them any extra information. They muster Isengard, pretty standard. And then I move because I only rolled one movement and all right, one is better than zero. And I get hit on the first movement and it's a one. So think for a moment, would you lose Gandalf to a one on the first move of the game? Um, my thinking was my opponent's going to be getting Saruman. They have plenty of musters. And so while it's not the most efficient corruption usage, I do want to get Gandalf turn two. So the sooner I lose him, the sooner I'll get him. And so I lose him. And all right, bye-bye Gandalf. Sometimes that's how the game goes. And sometimes that can be helpful for me. If I roll a Will of the West next turn, then, you know, it's, it's actually a perfectly good trade. And again, if I had Palantirs, I would have played King's Brand Men king brand's men before moving so that i would have gotten the extra draw from gandalf but because i don't have any palantirs i'm not giving away any information by um by waiting sorry i'm not giving any inf i'm not giving away information by playing it sooner than i have to okay my opponent gets sauron to war that makes sense and then what do i do here i have a bunch of army movements which is nice early on I feel like Dew is often a target, and so I use this army muster to consolidate Dew. I also want to move from Edoras to Westamnet sooner rather than later, but there are two different muster cards in the deck that get you a, an elite and a leader in Edoras specifically. So it's slightly more efficient if you can wait long enough to draw one of those cards to be able to play them in Edoras and then move them to Westamnet as opposed to moving to Westamnet right away. It's minor, but if I feel like I'm going to have enough time and and uh, Shadow isn't going to come crashing in from from uh, Orthanc, then maybe it's worth worth it. So I don't know. Um, I just wanted to shore up my defenses at uh, up north. Okay, my opponent gets Saruman, and then instead of playing King Brand's men um, right now, I just want to use these musters while I can to get the elves towards war. And I don't know if that's exactly right, but I would have considered, by the way, getting the elves all the way to war on turn one, but my opponent had enough musters that they could get the Witch King turn one, which did not seem worth it to me. So uh, they're just moving their armies in Mordor from Beredur to Gorgoroth, and then I muster the elves again. So I'm not in a huge rush to play King Brand's men. If I have Palantirs, then I'll be able to make good use of it. So I use my musters while I can. And then they use this army movement to get armies moving towards Lorien. So um, maybe this one regular scared them off of uh do i you know i was excited for to have king brand's men to get to to mess with that um but they just avoid 
do. And it turned out to be a nice strategy. Uh, they did have Swarm of Bats, but um, I, I guess maybe they can still come up from Mordor up there. But we'll see. For now, they seem to be targeting Lorien. Okay, so we go to next round. Um, I also thought it was clever that they did not use their character die to play Worn with Sorrow and Toil because there's not so much of a rush for it. You know, they'll probably be able to play it early next turn, and that way they use their character dice to move armies, and then when they have Palantirs, they can use Palantirs for, for something like that. So I, I thought that was um, I thought that was a good, clever play on their part. All right, so I get Ents. Obviously, if I get Gandalf, it's nice to have Ents. And I get Kindred of Glorfindel. I don't usually play that, but, you know, maybe it's okay to cycle. Um, there are at least two cards right now. So we'll, we'll, I'll do the rolls. They allocate one eye, and then they roll one more, getting five attacks and another muster. So that's nice for them. And then I get this ridiculous roll of three Palantirs and a muster. So the chances of getting zero movement is even on four dice is very low, right? Two, four, eight, 16, one out of 16, pretty low chances. Um, so I don't want to see that. I am happy that I kept King Brand's men because now at least I can use that. And I'm probably going to end up playing Kindred of Glorfindel for the card effect because what else am I going to do with these Palantirs? Um, and there are two cards off the top of the deck that would help me quite a bit in Lorien. Either Celeborn's Galadrim, which lets me muster in Lorien, or Power Too Great, which would be amazing if I could get Power Too Great because then the elves go to war and I get to use this uh, muster to actually muster more elves. If I had rolled a second muster, then I could have gotten the elves to war and then got an elite into Lorien. That was my plan. But my opponent instead is most likely, depending on what I draw, going to get Lorien under siege and get the Witch King. And so it's just not exactly the sort of role that I would want. But sometimes that's how it goes. Would you consider using an eye? I don't, I mean a ring. Um, I, I thought about using a ring, but I'm always reluctant to give shadow rings. All right, so I start by playing King Brandsman. I want to cycle, see if I can get to power too great or Celeborn's Galadrium. So I'm happy to get those two regulars in Dale. Imrahil of Dol Amroth, great card. Happy to see it. Um, but And it'll be playable, but still not um, helping me with my current problems. All right, so I think this is a very minor inaccuracy. My opponent did not um, get right in front, merge their armies into Dimril Dale right away. They instead moved from Gorgoroth to Minas Tirith. Uh, to Minas Morgul, it's okay, um, and they're going to merge up in Dimrald Dale next action, but if they had gotten their army ready in Dimrald Dale one turn sooner, they could attack Lorien, and that way, if I happen to draw into um, Power Too Great, uh, they're only giving me one chance to do it, which is to say the card that I just drew, which was Imrahil of Dol Amroth. But this way, I'm actually going to get two chances because uh, I'm going to play Kindred of Glorfindel. So... I play Kindred of Glorfindel, and I get to redraw, and it's Fear of Fire Foes. So, you know, I only had like a 20% chance or 18% chance of drawing either Celeborn's Gladroom or Power Too Great, but, you know, you try if you can. Um, Fear of Fire Foes, you know, what is that going to do? I, I don't know. I could bring Gandalf back into Grey Havens. Uh, I didn't get a Will of the West, by the way, this round also, so Gandalf didn't show up. Um, that would have been nice. But... Um, I could now bring him back to Grey Havens, and that way he can play Fear of Fire Foes and activate the North in the Shire. So that may be what I'll end up doing with Fear of Fire Foes. I also want to activate Ents, but any companion can go into Fangorn, and it's a lot easier, more reliable to get Gandalf to Grey Havens. So that's what I'm thinking right now. All right. Um, so my opponent now merges up in Dimrald Dale, and now um, they attack Lorien. And maybe I could have drawn an extra card with this um, with this Palantir, hoping again to draw a uh, something that helps uh, Lorien. But I think I just didn't want to use this army muster for um, what what would I have done? I would have had to play a card, or I would have ended up discarding a card. So 
I think I'm just planning on, I want to get, uh, like, I see that Lorien is going to fall, so I better, and I think that Dew is relatively well defended, so I better be prepared to defend Rohan and Gondor, so I think that's why I'm saving this muster. So I think that's my thinking. All right, they attack Lorien, now the elves are at war, they play Warren with Sauron Toil now. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I think it also would have been okay to um, wait till next round again in case they rolled a bunch of Palantirs, but um, yeah, okay. Uh, and now I, yep, so I muster Gondor one towards war. They're not activated right now, so they can't get all the way to war, but obviously my opponent's going to bring in the Witch King. Uh, so I just want to get, I'm just going to like muster Gondor towards war the hard way so that hopefully I can get in front of um, Corsairs of Umbar or something like that. Okay, uh, they bring in the Witch King into Lorien. Obviously, that makes sense. And then I play Emerhill of Dole Amroth because I don't actually have any other playable card, and I'm not that excited to uh, draw a card into five. I could, but in general, I just want to have units on the board to the extent that I can. Okay, they attack into Lorien, and, you know, I'm just sad because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't defend it. I mustered the elves towards war the hard way twice, and all it did was accelerate the Witch King for them, um, which is sad. All right, they play Swarm of Bats here. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, they want to they wanna cycle, uh, so that makes sense. And he, they get uh, one hit, uh, sorry, two hits because of Swarm of Bats, and I get one hit back, and then they press, uh, redrawing into Shadows Gather, and then they play Onslaught here. And uh, Onslaught's a nice finisher, so I think that makes sense. They get zero hits on that one, which is a slightly below average. I get one, which is average. And now for Onslaught, I still have... Um, what do I have? Do I have one? Um, yeah, I guess I have three hit points left. So they lose two units which is expected to do about one damage. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know that I would risk Onslaught here at all, but all right. Anyway, they uh, they lose two and they get two hits. So that is a good exchange. And now Lorien is looking quite tasty. Um, so I draw Ents and Swords and Ariador. Uh, and they are now rolling nine dice to my four, which always feels great as shadow and bad as free people. Uh, but there's, you know, I just, I didn't roll a will of the West to get Gandalf. Um, so that's how it goes. All right. They allocate two eyes right here, which surprises me a little bit. Um, is the fellowship doing that great? Do you really need to mess with them? I feel like the fellowship's going pretty slowly. And on a turn when Gandalf is not in play yet, if I get a Will of the West, I'm not spending it to move the fellowship. I'm spending it to get Gandalf. So my my sort of inherent movement speed is going to be a little bit lower um, anyway. So for that reason, I probably would just allocate one eye here. But it's, you know, this, that's mine. Okay, they get one extra eye. And then again, Gandalf does not show up. So that's sad. And one way to think about Gandalf's arrival is on average, you have pretty close to 50% chance, like 52% chance of rolling a Will of the West on four dice. So um, basically at any moment that you don't currently have a Will of the West, Gandalf is about two turns away, right? It's only 50% chance that you're going to get him next turn. So you should think of him as about two turns away. And then now that I've rolled... No Wills of the West. Again, he's like another two turns away. Um, and it's painful because I lost him turn one. I still think it was the right play to lose him turn one. But I sure wish I've gotten a, a Will of the West on the last eight dice. Okay. And I'm I'm getting a lot of Palantirs. What exactly am I going to do with them? It would be great. I could get Fear of Fire Foes. I could get the whole North going on. I look at this very tasty little Golder here. Um, so the one benefit to me of this early... Uh, Lorien play is that my opponent did leave Moria and Dol Guldur open. So the elves are at war. I can go Rivendell into Moria um, at some point. I don't know that that's particularly beneficial at the moment, but it's definitely something I'm thinking about. 
Um, Woodland Realm also could come down to Dol Guldur. But what I really want is to get the north to war and then muster up in Dale and send Dale down to Dol Guldur. That would be great. All right, so I yell at Gandalf and um, I start by playing Swords in Eriador because what else am I going to do? I need to cycle more cards and getting more units on the board isn't bad. All right, and now Riders of Theoden. So this is the, I cycled six cards. I've drawn six strategy cards and now I got one of the two that muster in um, Edris. So I've, I, I think I'm in time. Uh, it's going to be difficult for my opponent to muster up or think fast enough to get to Helm's Deep before these units can get in. So that's nice. All right, my opponent attacks Lorien. Obviously, it would have been great if I had drawn some Lorien defense, though, honestly, if I had drawn it right now, it would have been too late. Um, and then they take out Lorien, and I get at least one hit in parting. So they have these three, these four regulars here. All right, and there are two victory points. It's always nice to take out Lorien. No good place for the Fellowship to heal along the way. And I pass, see what they do. So they play on, on, they went. Um, good to keep pressure on the fellowship. Oh yeah, what did they draw? Threats and promises. Okay, not useful, but on on they went is nice. And oh, this is an example, right? They had an extra palantir, so they could have played Worn with Sorrow and Toil here um, instead of last round. Minor, but okay. Um, I go ahead and move because hey, maybe maybe I'll try and destroy the ring. That seems like a good plan. Um, and they missed, so that's good. And um, they draw a card, breaking the fellowship, fine. And um, and now I play Riders of Theoden because I want to have four cards in my hand so I don't have to discard. And it's perfectly nice to get those units in Edoras. They get the Southrons and Easterlings toward war. And now I use my character die to move them from Edoras to Westmanet because my thinking is... Um, I want to, I don't want to rush the fellowship, really. I, I could, but uh, I'm pretty happy with my Ent cards, and I don't really want to risk getting revealed in Moria. I mean, I could, but um, without having Lorian to heal at, it's it's just not, a, I don't feel a need to super rush. What I really want is to play a military game with some really strong defense in Rohan. So this is just getting me set up for hopefully a strong defense. That's my thinking right now. Maybe I should have moved again, but chances of getting hit would be very high on three dice, on fives. Okay, um, they move out and come after Gondor, um, Minas Morgul to South Athelion, and again, nine dice to four. I'm not happy about that, but I am happy to see guards of the Citadel. So the other thing is I didn't get I didn't get more musters. If I had had more musters, I could have um, mustered Gondor towards the war potentially and gotten um, just more units in Gondor in advance of this attack. So file of Galadriel, very good, um, you know, corruption defense if, uh, if I get to Mordor. And guards of the Citadel, just great. Like, really good card right now. Very happy to see that. Um, Okay, they get Stormcrow and Lidless Eye. Lidless Eye is really not useful at this point in the game. Stormcrow, I'm not not useful right now, but maybe I'll put Companions on the map and it'll be useful. I guess it's okay. Um, Great Host is perfectly good. So they allocate one and roll two more, and they get no characters, which is interesting. So that that's relatively unlikely, and they got none. Obviously, nice to get five attacks, um, and the musters are still useful at this point. Um, and I get another one of these ridiculous rolls. I mean, right, so this has been three rounds. Gandalf is taking his sweet time, uh, you know, and I don't get any movement and even more Palantirs. So that is pretty darn painful. Um, I guess one saving grace is there are three eyes. And so as long as I don't spend a ring, then uh, those eyes are wasted. But still, that's, I mean, second time in the game. That's tough. Okay. Um, so my opponent moves armies and uh, is just moving towards Gondor. <laughs> I make a joke that this is my strategy for avoiding Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Because if you don't move the Fellowship, then uh, you don't get hit by Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Uh, okay. So I continue to pass to see what they do. They get their armies, uh, merged together. And this is, this is an interesting play. Um, moving from South Rune to, uh, Ash Mountains. I don't often see that, but, 
um, given that they've sort of decided to not go towards do, this is a fairly, um, it, it's not actually that crazy in terms of getting a powerful army uh, merged up and they can do some cool things with this, with this army from, from Daggerlad and Ash Mountains. Um, I haven't really analyzed it that closely, but it's, um, it's definitely interesting. So, uh, and what did they draw into? Oh, right. Yeah. With the side of storm crow, not that useful. Okay. Um, I go ahead, I, I got to play something, right? So I play vial of Galadriel because it gets out of my hand. It's, you know, hopeful I'll maybe eventually make it to Mordor and it's great. I mean, it's just a great card if I make it to Mordor. Okay. Uh, they move this single regular and I'm like, oh, I wish I could, like, I wish Rohan were at war and I could just come fight these guys because the Witch King, um, you know, there's no character. They don't have any character dice, so you can't even run away. Um, and I'm like, oh, I see what he's doing. He's merge or they, they're merging up somewhere, right? I don't know where they're going to send the Witch King, but the idea is they didn't roll any characters, so they're just getting into position. And um, and then they merge, they move this army from from Dagger Lad to um, No Man Lands. And that's interesting. I'm not sure where it's going. Um, I think what's going to happen and we'll see, actually, I, I remember what happens here. They move, the next move is East of net, uh, Parth Celebrant to East of net. And then this army in Ash mountains to no man lands. And then they somewhat predictably, particularly because we can see their hand, um, play shadows gather to merge up these two armies because now they're three away. But what I'm realizing in this replay is dagger lad is also three away from East of net. So they could have just merged Ash Mountains with Dagger Lad, this move. And then on this next move, okay, what do I do? I play some card. Uh, I draw a card. Okay, so I draw a card. Maybe I'll draw something cool. Um, and on this next move, they move from Karth Kel Parth Celebron to Eastern Net. They would have already had their army merged in Dagger Lad that they didn't need to move again, and they could make some other half movement. Does that half movement really matter? Okay, probably not. But it is something to super minor, but something to think about. Okay. Um, okay. I go ahead and play guards of the Citadel here because what else am I going to play? I don't have anything particularly useful. I wish that Rohan were at war, but they're not. And, um, sometimes that happens as free people, particularly if you have not very many dice, you see what shadow's plan is and you just can't do anything about it. Um, and that's how it goes. So they go ahead and play shadows gather. And now there's this giant army on the doorstep of Rohan and, um, I feel kind of glad that this army is sitting here in Westham Net. At least it's something. I have scouts, so I can retreat from Westham Net if they attack. Um, and they don't currently have an extra attack right now. So um, so I think what I do is, yeah, so I muster Rohan. And my thinking is they'll attack into Westham Net. I'll be able to retreat into Helm's Deep, and then I'll be able to uh, muster in Helm's Deep. That's my plan right now. I didn't fully think that through because they could also attack from Fords of Eisen. Um, and if that happens, then I'm still not at war. So like, maybe I should have just merged up some armies in Helm's Deep. I don't know. Um, I have one, two, three, I have six units here total. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do. I do have some good end cards, but this army is just too big. This army in Eastern is just too big for me to actually fight effectively, even with my end cards. Um, so, but anyway, I muster Rohan towards war. We'll see what happens. All right, they get more Nazgul. Okay, good to have more leadership. Um, I might have been tempted to muster up an Orthanc because it seems like you're going after Rohan, but... All right, so uh, next round. I still, I didn't move, but they're still, I think, allocating... Uh... All right, they, they drew an extra card. They got rid of Lidless Eye. Ooh, new power is rising. That's a great draw. Okay, so they got new powers rising and dreadful spells can be useful. Um, I drew power too great now, which is, um, taunting me. I keep it because I think the no quarter, uh, combat effect is better than the challenge of the King combat effect. Um, and also maybe someday I'll play it for the card effect, I guess. Um, okay. So they still allocate one eye. They didn't have to. They do. And then they roll two eyes more. And, um, 
they only get two attacks. So I'm happy to get a little bit of a slower turn from them. And I finally get this nice roll. So it doesn't have musters. And remember, my plan was to muster up Rohan in response to an attack on Westamnet. But still, I can't complain about this. I mean, I'm very happy to um, get a little bit more movement from the Fellowship. I'm happy to get Gandalf finally. Turn five is later than I wanted, but still happy to get it. The other thing that I should note is I got We Prove the Swifter. So I'm definitely thinking like maybe I can sneak Aragorn down into Minas Tirith before, um, before it gets besieged and crown him. Or maybe I can get down to Dol Amroth. At this point, I'm thinking I want a little bit of a slower game with more military maneuvering so that at least I can, um, you know, hopefully slow down Shadow, cause some trouble, and then the, the ring can eventually make some progress slow and steady. Um Okay, so Gandalf shows up right away. I have to do that because if they have Day Without Dawn, uh, I don't want to risk losing my Will of the West, and I put him in Grey Havens. Also, if I had a Palantir, I've been holding on to this Fearfire Foes, I think since turn one or two. Um, I would, yeah, since turn two, I think, when I had all those Palantirs turn two. Uh, I've been holding on to this, hoping to get to play it with Gandalf. So it hasn't happened yet because I don't, I just got Gandalf and I don't have any Palantirs or Musters, but it will happen eventually. Um, okay, my opponent musters more Nazgul, okay, and I pass. They play Nazgul Search, which I think is pretty cool because you don't normally see it, but actually it's an effective use of a Palantir to move uh, Nazgul around. And maybe this was a slight mistake on my part because if I had moved and maybe the Fellowship got revealed, then they wouldn't be able to play this to move Nazgul around, and instead they have to spend a character die to move Nazgul around. So um, the Witch King is now in South Athelion, and there are now five Nazgul in Eastamnet. And uh, the Fellowship does not get revealed. They can't put a Nazgul on Rivendell because it's a stronghold, uh, but they still got to use a Palantir to move their Nazgul around. So nice use of that when the Fellowship is not in any particular hurry. All right, I pass again, and then they play Dreadful Spells right on Westamnet. And it doesn't count as an attack. Rohan does not advance towards war, um, and they get one hit. So um, I'm sad. I decide to lose a, a regular instead of an elite because I still have hopes of getting um, these elites into Helm's Deep to defend it. So... Um, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking, how I thought that could happen, but um, I was just, I was not thinking clearly about exactly how this attack was going to be incoming. All right, I move the fellowship, slow and steady, once per turn, try not to get hit by a six. Um, a six, all right, bound to happen at some point. Um, hopefully I don't get revealed, I get revealed. So, you know, this is not the best game for the fellowship. Um, I decide to go to Moria, the one... The one nice thing about getting revealed here and going into Moria, not that I would choose to do it, but if it has to happen, um, and then we draw the extra tile. I'll tell you what happens in a second. I draw the extra tile, which is a zero, so that's that's nice at least. Um, and I'm happy to get the reveal out of the way when I'm already revealed. Um, the nice thing about being in Moria is that it's five spaces away from Minas Tirith, which is three... Uh, Strider's level plus two, the amount of extra movement you get from We Prove the Swifter, spaces away. So I can go straight from Moria to Minas Tirith in a single action, either with a character or with a Palantir, using We Prove the Swifter, and then crown Aragorn next uh, action. Now, is that gonna like? Is that likely to happen? They they might have Day Without Dawn. I'm definitely nervous about that. But the efficiency of getting to Crown Aragorn right away um, is pretty good uh, if I manage to roll Will of the West. So that's my hope. We'll see what happens. All right. They use their muster. New powers rising. So um, I think they ended up with very efficient card play this this round. They used two Palantirs for, um, to move Nazgul around and then to do extra damage to this um, Rohan army. And then they used this extra muster to power up Rohan. And now Rohan is not looking so good. I was I was thinking that I would be okay with just them only having two attacks, but um, now I'm in. I, I, you know, it's it's a tough situation. I think I do have scouts, so maybe one of these armies can um, can retreat. All right. So 
Ah, right, 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 right. So what would be nice is if I could, uh, once they attack, if I could uh, then retreat into Helm's Deep with the other army, that's sort of one possibility. But because they just used their last muster and they don't have any rings, because I've been very disciplined to not give them any rings, uh, even at the expense of moving the Fellowship slowly, I now have this opportunity to uh, sneak into Moria. I move from Rivendell to Trollshaws, and then Trollshaws to Holland, and at the start of next round, before they have a chance to take any actions, I just walk into Moria. So um, they could prevent that right now by spending a character die, moving uh, a Nazgul onto North Dunland, and then... Um, spending their last action die to move these two regulars into Moria ahead of my um, army, uh, my three elite elven army. Does that help them enough? Is it worth two actions now? I don't know. What would you do? Um, it's not totally clear to me if it's worth doing that. I think you're like, oh, I wish I had saved a muster for Moria. Um, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's worth it. Um, are those two regulars even going to hold against these three elites? Like, probably not. Um, okay, so what they end up doing is attacking to Fords of Eisen. And the benefit of doing it this way, they play a strategy card. I go ahead and play my scouts. Um, I think it's unlikely that they have the second uh, swarm of bats. There are only two swarm of bats, and they already played one for a combat effect earlier. So um, I think that my scouts is likely to work, and I go ahead and scouts into uh, Helm's Deep. So what I would really love is a hybrid die right now so that I could both shore up this army from Weston Net into Helm's Deep and move this army from Trollshaws to Holland. But because I want to cause trouble and because I still have maybe some hopes um, of putting some pressure militarily, I decide to um, move towards Holland. And so I know at this point, if I make this move to Holland, <clears throat> I mean, unless they have ringwraiths are abroad and they're going to sneak them into Moria ahead of me, uh, then I believe that these armies are going to get in. The cost of that, though, is I only had one scout some one scouts card and I played it already. And so this army in West of net is going to be pretty badly hurt by this army from East of net. So, um, so they attack from West of net into East of net. Um, and I go ahead and play my end card. I, I would have loved the idea of saving them. And this would have been a benefit of keeping Gandalf and Fangorn because then I could play both, um, end cards because if if Gandalf is in Fangorn, it says if Gandalf the White is in Fangorn or Rohan region, you may immediately play another character event card from your hand without using an action die. So, um, you know, at some point I can get a companion in Fangorn and threaten Ents. But right now, if Gandalf had been in Fangorn, then I would have been able to play multiple Ents. The odds of me drawing two Ent cards are relatively low. Um, so I didn't want to bank on that. And getting Fearfire Foes is good. But Shadow knows that they're pretty darn safe. Anyway, I don't even have a companion in Fangorn. So, okay. So they attack, and that's why, long-winded, I play Horndark now, which is only two dice. So I want to be able to, as best as possible, defend Helm's Deep. Is it going to be enough against this massive armies? Like, no, probably not. Um, but maybe it'll hold out, at least for a little bit. Hopefully they'll just get one hit. Maybe zero hits. That would be nice. Um, but they get two hits. So two hits on two dice. Pretty good for them. Uh, at least I get two hits back. So that's something. Um, and now I have two regulars. And I would have gotten one extra roll if I had had uh, two regulars and elite there instead of two elite. So uh, minor misplay on my part. Okay. I go. They, they proceed and I retreat. And now Rohan is at war. And I'm going to be in a tough situation at the start of next turn because I obviously want to muster into Helm's Deep. I want to muster into Edoras and Fold to cause trouble. Um, but I also want to get this army into Holland before they can move somebody into... Uh, sorry, I want to get fr this army from Holland into Moria before they can move into Moria. So um, it's a tricky situation. I'm happy to see Heroic Death. Certainly a powerful defensive card. Um, advantageous position, probably, you know, maybe, okay, but... 
Um, North is already at war, so power of Tom Bombadil is not particularly useful to me. All right, they get returned to Valinor. Great combat effect. And uh, Nazgul Strike uh, certainly can mess with the Fellowship. All right, they have, by the way, interestingly, they have Breaking the Fellowship. They haven't played it uh, for the combat effect. Uh, I mean, for the card effect to try and separate companions, but I guess they don't really want to give me companions for free in Moria where I'm attacking. Uh, they allocate an eye, which they had to, and roll uh, one more. And then I get this very nice roll. So this is this is a great roll. This is absolutely what I'm happy to see. Um, I get a hybrid die. I get a Will of the West so that I could potentially crown Aragorn this turn. They seem to be focused on Rohan, so maybe I'll be able to get into Minas Tirith. Um, and I got some musters so I can start, uh, with my, uh, plan of fear fire foes and start mustering up the North. So, all right, we proceed. They, uh, I go ahead and use a character die here because I want to save my army musters and my musters later in the turn. And I don't really have another army that I'm urgently, that I urgently need to move. I'm just going to save it for later. So that's my thinking. That's why I use a character here. Um, I wish that I could have somehow mustered into Edoras at the same time, but I couldn't. They, in, um, I think, absolutely correctly take out Edoras and Fold at higher priority than putting Helm's Deep under siege. Obviously, they don't, they don't want me to muster an elite into Helm's Deep, but that's only one extra hit point. And um, the cost of me mustering into Edoras and Fold will, will cause them more, more action dice as pain. Uh, so I, I think that was absolutely the correct play. Very well done. Um, all right. So they have managed to contain Rohan really well. I think to myself, is it worth one extra hit point in Helm's Deep against this gigantic army? Like it's not even going to help me. So I'm saving my musters. I'm just basically hoping that, um, I mean, they rolled a bunch of attacks again, so it's it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm definitely not feeling hopeful right now, um, but maybe Gondor can survive. I can muster up Gondor enough. I can bring some companions into Minas Tirith. Um, the North will be at war, so I can maybe stir up trouble. And um, yeah, Rohan's a bit of a lost cause at this point, but that's how it goes sometimes. All right, so they attack into Helm's Deep. That makes sense. And then um, they merge an army in um, North Dunland and then merge up this beautiful um, three faction army in Helm's Deep. I mean, this is just great. These are, these are elephants from South Rune all the way into Helm's Deep. And they have some orcs that came from like Dol Golder through Lorien, right? And then they have these Isengard units. So this, this is just beautiful. Um, I, I mean, obviously I don't like it. It's free people, but you know, a shadow, you got to appreciate that. I mean, they just, they took out, they took out Rohan and, and this is the cost, right? They gave me, they gave me Moria. So they, they have to be careful. Um, but in exchange, they got this beautiful attack against, against Rohan. So yeah, I, I think that's nice. And then they're poised to take Gondor, right? They really only need, after they take, um, Lorien and Helm's Deep, they only need, Gondor and maybe I don't know exactly where else they would sneak in at this point it'd probably be a little tough to take out anybody at do um Rivendell is wide open so I'm definitely thinking about that I should have talked about that a little bit more um I am absolutely saving these musters um so that if this army in North Dunlin starts to march north um, I can muster some elves in there. I don't have a huge number of elves left, but um, it's not bad, right? Like I can still muster a couple of elites in there and that'll be able to hold off a bit. I also have um, power too great. Um, you know, am I going to have time to play it? I don't know, but it's definitely something I'm thinking about. Okay, so um, they've merged up their armies. Beautiful, gorgeous army in Helm's Deep for Shadow. All right. I go ahead and I'm, I'm, I have to save these musters. So I go ahead now and play We Prove the Swifter because I want to get to six dice. I want to give myself options. The fellowship is going slowly. Let's get to six dice if I possibly can. Obviously, I don't love the Witch King right here. But if the Witch King is going to come crash into Minas Tirith, um, I have some options, right? Like I do have two victory points right now. And 
if they come and spend an attack into Asgiliath, I'm still going to be able to crown Aragorn. So that's why I bring, um, I bring Boromir, of course, because I want to be able to get Gondor to war without spending a uh, mustard die to be able to use any die next round in case they don't attack. And I bring a Hobbit just um, to scare the Witch King and also um, because it just makes the Brave Stand combat effect better because it reduces their uh, cards by uh, three. I will say I do feel a little sad that Gandalf is so far away. If Gandalf were in Fangorn, then um, I'd be able to bring him over toward Minas Tirith and negate uh, these Nazgul leadership. But um, say Levy, I'm glad that the North at least is at war. Uh, sorry, it's not at war yet, but that's what he's doing over there. Um, and by the way, by putting, I had the choice between putting him in Rivendell or putting him in Grey Havens. From Rivendell, he can only reach the Shire. He cannot reach Ered Luin. And so the the shadow can sort of predict, oh, um, the free people have fear fire foes. By putting him in Grey Havens, that gives me an option to go to Ered Luin or to the Shire. And so they don't know if I have Book of Mazarbal or if I have fear fire foes. That's very minor, but um, that's why I did it. Okay. Um, surely shadow can suspect one of those two cards. Probably. Or maybe they were just thinking, you know, I'm hopeful that I'm going to draw it in the same way that sometimes Shadow puts um, an army into Umbar before they have Corsairs. So, um, yeah. Okay, anyway, I bring in Strider, Boromir, and um, Pippin. And, uh, right, and then in the Fellowship, sorry, in the Fellowship, I leave um, Legolas, Gimli, and Merry. And my thinking is, Maybe I can get a military victory. Maybe these guys can walk up to Dol Guldur or maybe walk over to Morinon. And, um, you know, Shadow is doing pretty well, but they're not going that fast. I can probably get to um, four victory points if they don't deal with Moria. Um, also, I know that I'm bringing the North to war, so, like, I can muster up in Dale and go after Mount Gundabad. And if they don't do anything in Dol Guldur, I can go after Dol Guldur. Um, so... Um, anyway, my thinking is if the Witch King crashes in, I'm going to have a chance to get Aragorn, fight in Minas Tirith, and then still live. So that's, that's my plan. Okay. Sorry. That was so long winded. Let's see what happens. So they start mustering. They, they pause on Helm's Deep and they start mustering in North Dunland. And, uh, I'm so happy to not see Day Without Dawn. I get Aragorn, I'm now up to six dice. I was rolling four dice for so long. Now I'm going to be rolling six dice. It's going to feel great. And um, they muster another elite in North Dunland. So clearly they're either going to like go after Rivendell or they're going after Moria. I don't know. Either way, this is now a scary army. So, um, you know, what would you do here? Do you start mustering in Rivendell? Do you uh, play Fear Fire Foes? So um, my thinking was, I'm going to play Fear Fire Foes, and a then um, I get to Nor move. I get to do a bunch of things with this. One, I get to move Gandalf, so he's a little closer to the action. I get to bring the North to war, and I get to bring Aragorn to Fangorn, which is three moves away. So now I can threaten Ents at the start of next turn, um, and that would be nice to kill um, Saruman. I don't have great chances of, of being able to kill him with three units there, but there are some. Um, and now with this last army movement, which I had been saving, uh, I'm threatening to go towards Dol Guldur. So if this army in North Dunland moves towards Rivendell, which I don't want to see, um, I will be able to at least get Dol Guldur. And that's going to cause some problems for them. Uh, especially because I have this army in Minas Tirith that can get activated with one action, no matter what, guaranteed, because I have Boromir next round. Um, so I'm doing a lot with that Fear of Fire Foes. I saved it. Uh, I had planned for this, and um, it just creates a lot of simultaneous threats for Shadow. And um, what they do is they defend against the Ents. They muster a regular into North Dunland and a regular into Orthanc. And... Um, you know, I think they basically just missed the fact that, um, 
I can move towards, I, I think about moving Gandalf, but instead I just, I move this regular and I move Dale to support them because probably what's going to have to happen for Shadow next round is they're going to either have to deal with Moria or they're going to have to deal with Dol Guldur. So I figure if I can bring some support, um, thanks King Brand's men, uh, to Dol Guldur with them, like it's obviously inefficient to, to be moving these two armies separately, but I need this one regular to get their first thing next round to be able to take the stronghold and then okay i'll be able to move this army in afterwards it's not a it's not really efficient but it gets me the stronghold uh successfully by the way i i thought about bringing more companions down to Minas Tirith to be able to deal with the witch king in case the witch king came in but i intentionally left two captains um to be able to go into moria so if they put moria under siege i can then separate companions from the fellowship into the siege of Moria and have two captains plus a hobbit. And that will give me four leadership and two companions. And I'm saving this heroic death to be able to defend whatever stronghold needs it. So that's my plan. And now my military victory is coming together. I, I you know, I was feeling very hopeless for a long time. Um, and I think that just goes to show like, just, just keep going. And who knows, like, you don't know what kind of action roles shadow is going to get, and you don't know what, what options you can make. And I think in particular, giving yourself six dice, you, you're going to have some options. You're going to have options to defend. You're going to have options to continue to make slow progress with the ring if you want. Um, so there we go. All right. And my opponent says that's one of an overlook. And yeah, obviously that is, that is pretty bad. They, they should have mustered you know, a regular and dull Golder. And, uh, yeah, I mean, mistakes happen and, uh, that is a major mistake, but that is part of, you know, that can happen with military victories, uh, that sometimes you can capitalize on mistakes, but games are not perfect and that's, that's okay. So at this point they're like, well, I guess I'm going to go for Moria, um, because they, um, realize that they're not going to get to 10 victory points next round. So Rivendell is off the table. They have to deal with Moria and I am, I am pleased with these results. Um, Okay. You know, do I think these six hit points in Moria are going to hold? Maybe, particularly if I separate these companions into it. Um, you know, I, I pretty rarely play Kindred of Glorfindel, but uh, I'm sure happy I have three elites in there and not just two. So that has some decent chances. And Elven Cloaks, look at this. It's very rare, very rare that you get to play the combat effect um, of these blue tiles and red tiles, but this is, this is exactly what I want because they're in Moria and the fellowship is there. So, uh, it's just an exciting, exciting moment. Um, I also got book of Mazarbal, uh, which means I could put the dwarves to war as well. And I have these units in Ered Luin. I don't know if they're ever going to be used, but, um, I could, um, and I'm rolling six dice. So my opponent, uh, properly allocates zero eyes. <laughs> they see that I'm going for a military victory, definitely allocate zero eyes at that point, but they still rolled two. And interestingly, they rolled zero musters. So um, they can't even muster into Dol Guldur. If I were feeling particularly risky, I would separate companions right now into um, Moria in case they in case they attack Moria right away, but I think it's unlikely and I don't want to risk um, Pits of Mordor. They have already played um, Orcs Multiplying again, which is the muster card for Dol Guldur and Mount Gundabad, but, they're, but Pits of Mordor is still outstanding. So I am worried about that. They could play that with the Palantir. Um, okay, so I'm happy to have rolled this beautiful roll. I have plenty of attacks, plenty of musters, um, I think it's relatively unlikely that they they have Day Without Dawn because had if they had it, they almost certainly would have played it last round, but they might have drawn it. And um, there's just... Ha, funny. Okay, so uh, my fault. Uh, I didn't actually roll that. Uh, this is what I rolled. Still good enough. Um, and I use a Will of the West to move my armies in, and that's fine. Um, so I hadn't actually clicked the roll button. All right. But this is great. I got Dol Guldur. I'm now up to four victory points. I am pleased with these um, units following up 
from um, Dale. I will be able to get them in, even if this army from Moria decides to come over and attack Dol Guldur. It would have been great if they had even fewer attacks. Obviously, um, six attacks is above average for eight dice. You'd expect about half, so about four attacks. But still, um, that's how it goes. They didn't get any musters, so that's good, at least for me. Uh, and I got, I got what I needed. I got the army movement. To, uh, the hybrid die to be able to make progress. All right. They play half orcs and goblin men in uh, Moria to, to pump it up. That makes sense. And Ooh, and they had ring rates are abroad. So, um, okay. So that's good. They're just, they're just powering up, um, powering up Moria. And at this point I'm like, okay, great. I will separate all my companions into Moria. I have, um, I can't play advantageous position because it's not my own territory, but I can play it as a gift. I can play heroic death, which is, which is good for two. Um, I got no quarter. So I definitely have some chances of holding Moria. They could have the Balrog. There are like plenty of things they could have, but Moria is pretty strong. Um, I definitely have some chances. Okay. So, you know, at this point, is the fellowship making a lot of progress? No. No, but I might win the game. <laughs> so you can win militarily too. All right. So at this point, they're like, yeah, not going to make it into Moria. I'm going to get my armies moving. And they've calculated a really pretty cool path. Um, so I go ahead and pass, I think, for a moment. I thought about mustering into Dale, but I'm still worried about like it's little sneaky things into Rivendell. Um so I'm holding on to some musters, I guess. I also want to, right, so my plan, and I, I guess I probably shouldn't have passed here. My plan was actually to use the Will of the West to do army movement to get Boromir um, and uh, Pippin out to Osgiliath so that they could start to threaten Morinon. Um, but I passed and you can only use Boromir's ability when he's in a stronghold. So at this moment, when they move adjacent to North and to adjacent to Dol Guldur, I have to actually um, they take Dale as well. I have to actually now use my army movement to get to to fortify this stronghold. So at least there's some chance that I, you know, that I win this round. Um, so that was a slight misplay because now when I do this movement. Um, Gondor isn't at war yet, and so I have to keep Boromir in Minas Tirith, and I end up moving Gandalf to Evendim. I mean, maybe someday I'm going to get these guys from Ered Luin merged up, and um, this army will go do something. I don't know, um, but what else am I going to do with that extra half movement? I could maybe move one of these regulars somewhere, but this this starts to get this army going. Not the most efficient. Okay, they move armies to Narrows of the Forest, and um, they have now captured Dale. That's interesting. The elves are at war, so I don't know exactly how much that gains, but it does slow me down a little bit. Um, and uh, I go ahead and use Boromir's ability using the Palantir, because that way I can use the character die to move an army and the muster to muster. Um, so there's not that much I could do to help my, um, my army in Dol Guldur. One idea would be to move, so they move some armies, they split up, um, into North and South Athelion, and, and then they merge up this army, um, into the Narrows of the Forest, and that's going to take out Dol Guldur. One idea is to bring Aragorn into Dol Guldur. And then um, I'd have a heroic death for three from Aragorn in Dol Guldur. And um, is that worth it? I don't know. Uh, it felt to me like even with Aragorn, this army is going to be able to take out Dol Guldur. That was my thinking. Uh, it's just not a strong enough army relative to how many hit points the attacking army has. So I'd rather hang on to Aragorn and fight another day. I have the North at war so they can muster up and come maybe take Mount Gundabad. I can muster up Gondor's at war now. So um, I'm, 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 you know, I'm hoping to just bide my time. That's my thinking. 
All right, so I go ahead and muster an elite in Minas Tirith. They attack into Dol Guldur, and uh, Boromir moves out to Osgiliath. I don't know exactly where he's going to go from there, um, but it's nice to have a big army. That's a pretty big army. That's, in case you can't see it, that's four, um, four regulars, three elites, and four leadership with two companions. So... Um, that's pretty good. I didn't get to play Elven Cloaks as the combat effect because there is no, there is no combat in Moria, which is a little sad. But okay, so uh, they go ahead and attack into Dol Guldur. Um, I go ahead and play Power Too Great here because hopefully at least I can dish out enough damage to them. Uh, they manage to get two hits, and I get two hits, including my combat card. They obviously press, because if they don't win this combat, I win the game. Um, they play uh, Deadly Strife. So that's good. I didn't have anything that was good enough that I thought could save them. Heroic Death obviously is worth one hit point, but at this point in the game, I'd rather play Heroic Death on a companion to be able to soak up more than one hit point. Um, so I'm saving it. That's my thinking. I want to hold on to Lorien. I want to do enough damage to this army that it can't just come right back to Moria. Um, sorry, I said Lorien. I, I want to hold on to Moria. Uh, and hopefully this army in Dol Guldur gets whittled down enough. So we'll see. Uh, but they managed to get two hits right away. At least I get two hits back. And now they're left with this uh, eight hit point army. Still pretty strong. So not that great. But what can I do? All right, so they have uh, not lost the game, and my northern forces forces were eliminated, but I'm still at two victory points, and they're only at four victory points. And really three, because I can take back Dale whenever I need to. Uh, all right, so I get uh, Kyrdan's ships, which is always a useful uh, reinforcement, and Grey Company, Brave Stand is obviously a very good combat effect, and I decide, I think, to discard Book of Mazarbal because I'm never going to play it because I don't want to put the dwarves to war and let them get the Mouth of Sauron too quickly. So, um, because if all five uh, factions are at war, then they can get the Mouth. So, um, what do they get? They get Orc Patrol and Hill Trolls. That's nice. And, okay, sorry, I got rid of Power of Tom Bombadil. I guess I'm still thinking maybe I'll play Book of Mazarbal, or maybe I just want to, you know, move where Aragorn is. Okay. Fellowship is good. They uh, allocate no eyes, which is obviously correct, and roll none, which I'm sad to see because I'm still on a pretty good... I still have some military options. And they roll... Uh, what is that? Seven attacks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven attacks. Um, expect four and a half, so that's good. And then these two extra musters. Um, and if they, right, if I play, if I get the dwarves to war, that becomes an extra attack as well. So, um, all right, and I get a uh, very nice roll. Four attacks is what we'd expect. I'm happy to see the musters and one palantir I can work with. So that's uh, that's a nice roll for me. Um, I go ahead and muster, what am I doing? I must, I pass. Okay, so I'm just waiting to see what they do. I want to muster up in Minas Tirith uh, because I want to be able to free up Boromir's army to go do something. Um, but I also need to be careful about Rivendell. I really don't want to let them just walk into Rivendell and they have so many attacks. I need to sort of wait and see what they're going to do. So they... Um, merge up armies. This is now seven regulars in um, South Athelion. And then they play King is Revealed. So obviously that's a great card uh, for this point in the game. They don't get a Nazgul out of it, but nice to just have more units in Mordor. Um, I continue to pass and they now move. What are they doing? Let's see. They move four elites and this army out of Dol Guldur. So what's going to happen? Clearly, it seems to me this army is now coming for Moria. So when you are facing a free people military victory attempt and the fellowship is not making any progress and you have nine dice to their six, you're allocating no eyes. You're probably going to be able to stay ahead of it if you can just keep them under control. And so I don't like to see this as 
free people. I think this is a good play by Shadow. They have enough attacks. They can just take out Moria, and now I'll be down to zero victory points. And like clearly, this six elite, you know, force is going to be able to do it. Um, they left one um, regular besieging Moria this whole time. I could attack out if I wanted to waste an attack just to make to waste an attack from them, but I don't feel the need to do that. Maybe I should. Um, but I don't like to see this. And this is what you can do as shadow. When you get a bunch of attack movement, you can plan out your turn and do something cool. I, I feel like they're probably not going to go for Rivendell. So given that I have a little time, I start mustering in the North. So my plan is, look, they're going to take Moria probably maybe, maybe they won't, but they probably will. I'm going to muster up the North, use up this force pool as best I can. I, I have three elites plus some regulars and some leaders. And I got my musters, so let's just try again, right? Like they took they took Dol Golder back. That's sad, but I have this pretty good force in Gondor. I can build up a good force in the north, and maybe I still have some hopes. All right, um, they moved this army from Fords of Eisen to Gap of Rohan, but it would have been uh, slightly faster to go Fangorn, Parth, Celebrant, Dimmeldale. Um, Moria as opposed to this way it's minor it's only a half movement different so it doesn't really matter that much but um, you know if you can save half movements here and there that's good all right I use the will of the west now because um, in case they have day without dawn I just I want to play it and I want to get my musters on the board and they continue with their plan to take out um, Moria it seems like they're not going for Rivendell right now so I'm okay using these musters uh, on the north instead and okay they undo that they use a character die here okay i don't think it matters too much and um i am now out of elites in the north and so i start mustering regulars um and uh also regulars in minas tirith so as long as i have a decent sized force in minas tirith that frees up boromir to i don't know maybe <laughs> go retake dol golder who knows uh maybe go over to i mean i still have this great ent card um, and they've just weakened their forces in Helm's Deep. So maybe I can just go like take out Rohan and go after Orthanc. I don't know. I have options. Um, maybe I can sneak around into Morinon, right? Like I can go through this. They have three strongholds to defend back here. They have a decent number of forces, but okay. Um, so I'm mustering up Minas Tirith to free up uh, Bormir. All right. And then they shuffle armies. They now have five regulars in Umbar. Uh, always nice to get that. Um Reinforced, and by the way, Cairdon ships can be used in a coastal region. So I could play it in Umbar if I get down there. So I, at the moment, I can't really go down there, but uh, this is too much of a force. But um, I'm definitely thinking about that. It's something to consider. The other thing is, by the way, you can use it in Evendim. It's hard to see on the map, but Evendim is, uh, no, that, what does that say? Coastal. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So, yeah, any coastal region. So I could play it in Evendim if, if I wanted to. But I don't want to have enough in the North Pool, and I don't really want to deplete um, deplete the Elven Pool too much because I anticipate the Rivendell or potentially Woodland Realm um, can get attacked. So um, I want to leave those there for now. Okay, anyway, they have merged up in Moria, and that is 16 hit points against my six. So, you know, the usual guideline is about double. Um, but I do have three companions, so that's something. And I have Brave Stand, which is going to be good. I have Heroic Death, which is good. But, um, yeah, still probably Shadow is favored. Okay, I just use more mustering while I have the chance. Uh, I get a regular, another regular in Bree, and a regular in Minas Tirith. And then... Um, I saved my Palantir for last because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I don't have anything particularly great to play, um, though I guess I could play Cairden Ships in Evendim. All right. Um, they play a strategy card, and I'm hoping that it's something like Deadly Strife, uh, and so I play Brave Stand, but they play We Come to Kill. So this is a great play on their part. They're going to have a bunch of elites and my Brave Stand. Obviously, it hurts them a little bit, but it would have hurt a lot more if it was on a Deadly Strife or something like that. Um, so they only get to roll two dice. Uh, they get a hit and um, I get three. 
So that was what happens when you have good leadership and get to roll five dice with the four leadership. So um, they lose three regulars and now they do um, their we come to kill and they get one hit on that, which is slightly below average for them. Uh, but I've just taken two hits and I've only dished out three to them. So that's not looking great at the moment. Um, I, they redraw into swarm of bats, which is certainly nice. They do have cruel as death. They have several good options here. Um, let's see. They play cruel as death, which is good additional combat power. And I play heroic death. I obviously want to play Elven Cloaks. I am going to get to play Elven Cloaks after all for its combat effect. Um, but I also want to make sure that I don't get too low. Maybe it would have been better to play It's a Gift here. My hope is that I'll be able to survive and they don't get too many hits. But they get a three hits. So even though I'm going to soak up two with a Heroic Death, uh, it's not going to help. At least I get four back. So that's something. I am dishing out a good amount of damage back. Gimli dies along with uh, an elven uh, re elite getting reduced to a regular. And I am now left with only three elites in the pool. And they are continuing to press. I don't know that you have to rush this too much, uh, but I guess they just want to deal with it and be done while they can. So... I play, oh, and did they get some good strategy card? What did they get? Oh, they got Swarm of Bats, right? So they play Swarm of Bats on it as a gift. Obviously, as a little sad, I would have gotten plus one on everything, but so be it. Um, and they get three hits here. So thus ends the Siege of Moria. At least I get three hits back. So those three companions have died. Um, I'm down to zero victory points. I have managed to take out this army. So this army is now significantly weakened and cannot just go rampaging anywhere. But what am I left with, right? An empty fellowship and um, yeah, not that much. So in any case, I use the um, the Palantir to draw and hope that, uh, you know, maybe maybe we'll get things going again. I do have this pretty powerful northern army that can go do something. And they muster an elite into Moria because they do not want me to retake it <laughs> with this northern army that I've mustered up. Uh, they draw into Fighting Urukai, Ring is Mine, and I get um, House of Stewards, which is really nice because Boromir could be pretty soon in a um, Gondor region. And um, they allocate No Eyes, which is obviously continues to be correct, and roll two, which I'm happy to see. And then I get this great roll. Very flexible. A lot of things to do. So I would love to see um, through a day and a night. This is a great opportunity to be able to use it. I can sneak up towards Dol Guldur. I can get Gandalf's army merged up. So a lot of good things. I start by mustering a little bit more. The only problem with Gandalf's army and the fact that I used uh, three companions in Moria is that this army actually does not have very much leadership. So I need to muster just some regular leaders in there. And that gives me a chance to continue getting some regulars into Minas Tirith. Uh, my goal is to try and basically get the force pool pretty low. I'm going to get this elite, this Gondorian elite from House of Stewards and this Palantir right here. Uh, and that means I have a couple more regulars to muster and I have a couple more regulars and leaders maybe to muster. All right. So uh, they muster once into Morinon. Okay, and another regular into Moria. Fine. And I pass just to see what they're going to do. They uh, draw a card. Seems fair. And then I move armies. I move um, Boromir towards uh, Rohan. And my thinking is I'm almost out of the uh, Gondor uh, force pool. I'm almost out of the Northern Force Pool. I would like to access all of this Rohan Force Pool. That'll be great. And um, all I have to do is take Fold. And while I'm on my way, I'll stop by Druiden Forest because I need to be in Gondor to be able to play House of Stewards. So I'm happy to play House of Stewards, turn this Palantir into a muster, and draw two strategy cards because I only have 10 left. So my chances of getting towards through a day and a night is pretty high. I'd really like to draw that here. My opponent is not mustering in Dol Golder. And um, 
if they do start mustering dull gold ore, I can still change directions. I have a lot of options of where to go. Um, and I still have that Ent, so I'm eyeing Orthanc. That could be really nice. Uh, and seeing that, they muster into Orthanc and North Dunland and South Dunland. And so now I have to worry a little bit about Rivendell. I don't want to just give that away. But I do have a nice force up here, so we'll see what happens. All right, I go ahead and play House of Stewards. And I get to draw my uh, two strategy cards. I get Celeborn's Galadrim. Uh, and I'm happy to see Confusion. That can be good. And I go ahead and discard Book of Mazarble because um, I'm on the offense. And also, I don't want to bring the doors to war. So they move. They think about moving armies. And if they had done this move, um, I could have backtracked pretty fast towards, uh, <laughs> towards uh, Minus Morgul. And they've already played uh, one card, uh, the ring rates are abroad, that lets them move an attack with a Palantir. So they only have Black Captain Commands left in their deck. And they don't have any rings. So uh, anyway, they undo that move and they realize, you know what, we need to wait for Bormir's army to move a little farther away before we chase after him. Um, and instead they prepare Umbar and um, North Athelion. Now, I didn't want to um, do this action that I do, but I don't want them, if I'm going for a military victory, which I still kind of am because I can go after Dol Gold or I can go after Mount Gundabad, um, and maybe Moria or maybe Hel like maybe Helm's Deep I and mean, maybe Orthanc. Like there are a lot of things. And if this army, if this army in North Athelion crashes into Minas Tirith, I can turn... Um, Boromir's army around. Anyway, I need to be able to hold out so that Shadow cannot get to 10 victory points on the same turn that I get to four victory points. There's a very fine balance between going on the offense and leaving your strongholds empty, like what happened in Rivendell, and um, still keeping enough at home to be able to defend. So I, I think I'm striking the right balance. I put a regular into Dol Amroth, and I'm okay getting the extra leader um, in Bree, so that now at least this army, uh, this northern army has three leadership. That's better than two. Um, okay, so, I, and I'm worried that they have Corsairs, right? They could easily have Corsairs. It would be an efficient use of their Palantir die, and um, I have zero victory points right now. So if they can, if they can get to ten, when I get to, um, when I get to four, they win. So I did use the last muster. Um, and I didn't defend Rivendell because they just don't have enough movement to get there this round. Um, and I wouldn't be super happy if they um, send an army up there, but then Gandalf can come and take Moria. So uh, I think they're probably going to stay in Moria. That's my guess. Uh, they do attack into Asgiliath. I wish that I had gotten an extra regular in there, but so be it. Sometimes that's how it goes. And I play Confusion here because I have six cards. I don't think I'm playing any more, and it would be great to just dish out some damage and maybe survive. Uh, I do get one hit against them, but they get a six. And uh, thus, Osgiliath falls. They leave a regular in North Athelion. Oh, I have drawn into Path of the Woeses. So if I go into Rohan, muster up, and they then besiege Minas Tirith, and they leave Osgiliath open, I can jump in and um, cut off their armies and then just charge into Mordor with like a giant army with Boromir. So that could be really fun. We'll see what happens. Um, okay, I go ahead with my plan to attack into um, from Druidan Forest into Fold. I'm happy to prepare to muster up. I, I take out that orc, no problem. And um, they muster uh, they muster up in Orthanc, right? I would love to take out Orthanc. Um, very satisfying to kill Saruman, and I do have this awesome Ent card, but it is tough to take. So um, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I go ahead and merge uh, Gandalf's army up. I think about going down towards Moria, but I think that Mount Gundabad is actually an easier target. Hopefully they won't roll too many musters next turn, and either Gandalf can come up to Mount Gundabad, or Boromir can go over to Dol Guldur. Hopefully I'm going to draw into uh, through in a day and a night, which I've been hoping to draw for a long time, and um, we'll see what happens. Okay, they play the Rage of the Dundalindings. 
what? No, no, sorry. They just drew a card. Sorry. They drew a card and they drew Rage of the Dunlendings. That is interesting. I guess they didn't want to play many kings. Um, yeah. Okay. They're not really worried about breaking the fellowship at this point. So they're like, I don't really care about Nazgul Strike breaking or the ring is mine. So they're just drawing strategy cards. That makes sense. Okay. Um, they get Ulig High, which is good for defending in a siege. They get another red tile, which is not useful given the strategy that I'm using. And um, I draw into Red Arrow. Obviously, it's really nice to have scouts, but I don't think they're going to be attacking into me. And I can just muster normally in Rohan. Taking out Edoras is good, but maybe Bormir's army has something else to do. I don't know. Uh, so they discard, give it to us in Nazgul Strike, and I think I discard Red Arrow. I love the Red Arrow. It's a great card, but Rohan's already at war, and I don't think my armies are getting attacked. So that's my thinking. They allocate no eyes, roll two, but get plenty of musters. Um, five attacks about what we'd expect on um, nine dice, and I get Red Arrow, which is okay. Um you know, I kind of wish that I still had uh, the red arrow so that I could attack into Edoras and then muster up there. But I still have I still have a good number of musters. So um, we'll see what they do. I would love to have through a day and a night, right? This would be such a nice use of through a day and a night with these Palantirs, but just haven't drawn it yet. Okay, I th I muster into Minas Tirith right away because um, I want to have a full. Uh, contingent there in case it get bes gets besieged and I'm happy to muster more into um, into Rohan start to use the the Rohan pool all right they muster um, they use oh right so they because they have drawn Rage of the Dunlendings they use uh, the voice of Saruman again and um, then they upgrade more elites it's interesting that they're doing that because um I would have been a little worried about Mount Gundabad and Dol Guldur. Like, these armies are not that far away. And um, they do have Ulig High, and they do still have two musters left. But, all right, I draw a strategy card, hoping to draw into Through a Day and a Night. It's, you know, 14% because there were seven cards left, but I don't get it. Um, I don't really need to play these urgently. Like... I want Daylights. Daylights are great defensive cards, but I'm mostly on offense right now. So I'm valuing Daylight a little bit lower. <laughs> I mean, I threw away Caliporn's Gladroom. I mean, when do I discard that card? That is a very rare discard. But I'm happy to have Heroic Death. That is very powerful to defend Strongholds. And, um, you know, at the moment, I'm thinking Dol Golder and Mount Gundabad. And, and these armies are pretty big. So I need to be careful about not letting my opponent walk into Rivendell. And I definitely don't like seeing these armies in North Dunland and South London. But um, then they play Rage of the Dunlandings and go south. So they are heading towards Helm's Deep. That's clearly their plan. They want to... I mean, I do have this giant army right here in Rohan. Um, but I didn't draw into... Um, through a day and a night, it's time to make my move. I'm happy to have three hybrid dice so that I can move pretty efficiently. Obviously... You know, not obviously, but they could easily muster in. Uh, but so be it. Hopefully I'm big enough to be able to take them out anyway. Uh, and now they spend this muster die to upgrade Orthanc. And on one hand, I can see why they're worried about Orthanc. But on the other hand, like Dol Golder is right here with just one regular. Like, I mean, I realize you have some armies here in Lorien and, um, and, and uh, Moria to help. But, okay, I would have just mustered it. Like, they have enough force pool, right? Yes, yeah, so they have some elites. I mean, I would just probably just put some elites in there. Okay, I am very happy to see them not mustering there. I am happy to be attacking, uh, getting so close to them without them mustering up. Obviously, I'm worried about Pits of Mordor. I'm kind of expecting Pits of Mordor to be able to put two regulars into each of these. But, um, okay, I'll take it. I know that I know that um, orcs multiplying again is gone. If I if I didn't know that that card was gone, I would be very worried. But these guys can take out. I mean, these armies are big enough. I spent long enough mustering. These guys are big enough to take out 
five regulars and even, you know, a couple of elites and some regulars. Uh, okay, so my opponent merges some armies through around Orthanc and then also into Fords of Aizen. And I guess their plan is to come up and deal with uh, Dolgolder um, with this army, I guess, is what we're going to see. All right, so I'm very happy to be able to attack into Mount Gundabau with just two regulars in it. Even if they now have Pits of Mordor, I'm still happy. I can take it out. Um, they move armies into uh yes yeah, so they leave moria totally undefended and okay that makes sense i really don't have anybody over here i mean when have you seen the shire north downs brie rivendell moria north and south dunlin entirely empty i mean <laughs> look at this these armies are like the war is elsewhere <laughs> we are going somewhere else um and look at this elephant. Like, way to go, elephant. You have done a lot of work. What happened? Did this this elephant... This elephant came south rune all the way over here, right? They went, they merged up, they besieged Helm's Deep, then they changed their minds, marched all the way through Dunland to Moria, and now are coming around to come back to Dolgolder. I mean, that is amazing. All right, so... They have one more attack right now, but I don't have another attack. So on one hand, I hate to use rings and certainly not right now when they don't have any um, because I know it's going to give them an extra attack next turn. I am actually mostly okay with it because um, I'm very happy to get Dolgolder under siege with only a regular. Um, so I use a ring, I attack into Dolgolder. And um, if I had had through day and a night, I wouldn't have needed to do any of this, but so be it. Okay. Um, so, what's happening? They, um, oh no, I guess I still would have had to do it even with through the day and the night. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe not. I can't remember. Uh, okay. So, they use the ring right away to um, move this army, which they could have done anyway, but then to retake fold. So the fact that Boromir came and took Fold meant that they used the ring right now to recapture Fold because they didn't want me mustering up in Rohan. And, and you know, it's, it's an interesting play. Obviously, I like saving rings, but you're probably going to have enough to take out um, Dol Golder next turn with this army. I would be a little worried because I could muster up in Rivendell and go to Moria or, um, I mean, that's probably my main counterplay. But, okay, anyway, um, they use their ring for that. It does prevent me from mustering up in Rohan, and without without that mustering point, I really will have problems mustering another army again. And I certainly could have done that first thing uh, in the turn by not taking it. So that's a, that's a really interesting choice. Comment if you would use the ring to take fold uh to a pr prevent like look at i mean i have a beautiful rohan mustering pool right now and even a single elite would let me just go crazy there all right anyway so they use the ring for that and then they're going to merge up and try and fight boromir here okay um so we go on to round 11 and they they do draw a day without dawn here and uh what are they going to get rid of sure they get rid of the red tile I get scouts, but it's Spirit of Mordor, and we know how friendly this army is with lots of other units in it. And I'm very happy to see Brave Stand. So these are two great draws. In the end, what do you discard? I discard the end card because the battle is not in Rohan. And I discard Path of the Woses, which is very nice, but um, Sudden Strike is not as useful as, I think, some of these other combat effects. Um, I, I, I At this point, I'm sort of shifting to defensive mode because um, I'm going to be able to take these strongholds. I just now need to hold the stronghold once it gets taken. So um, they uh, roll two eyes and get this crazy roll, and I get six attacks. So, um, you know, we've had some really swingy action rolls over the course of the game. I mean, I had two rounds where I rolled three Palantirs and an army muster. Um and Gandalf didn't show up for like four rounds, but then at the end of the game, they roll this, which is 
one attack. They have one attack on eight dice, which is way below average. I don't know exactly how low the probability is to only get one attack, uh, but it's really low. And they have Fighting Uruk High. So if they could besiege this stronghold, then they would be able to um, start a battle with a Palantir. So obviously that's really sad for them, but um, they don't have Pits of Mordor. Uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> that's basically game over, right? I mean, one attack, they can draw a card and maybe they'll draw into Black Captain Commands, um, but they don't have a ring because they use their ring to retake fold. So I don't know. I don't know that it was a mistake. Like, I, can you count on getting zero, like one attack on eight dice? Very unlikely. Um, I will say this is part of the strategy of free people military victory because over enough turns, probably one turn or two turns, Shadow is going to roll a bunch of eyes at some point or, you know, get it really low on attacks or get really low on musters. And if you're poised, uh, you can sometimes take advantage of it. So, um, particularly if you have six dice. So, all right. So, uh, that he, um, they say it should be game. I'm like, okay. So, uh, I go ahead and attack into, um, Mount Gundabad first and, uh, they die right away and do no hits back. So I have this incredible army with Gandalf and then, um, my opponent merges up in South End and Vale and then Boromir attacks and, uh, takes out Dol Golder. And um, I'm at four victory points, and they're like, well, maybe I'll draw into Black Captain Commands. They try, but they draw Cruel Weather. So it is indeed cruel that they got such a bad draw. Now, at this point, with three musters and two palantirs, there's nothing they can do. Even if they draw into Black Captain Commands, they put it under siege, but then they can't, they don't have a, another palantir to start um, the attack. So that's game. <laughs> uh, and I ended with these gigantic armies in um and i could have actually yeah so you know maybe these guys could even go and attack take take lorian i mean take moria back but in any case uh that's the game um i hope you enjoyed it i'm gonna show you what um what we ended up playing out so what what we said was like uh well what if you had gotten a slightly more reasonable role with at least two attacks what would you have done then and so um, what we did was we said, okay, let's, let's play it out. So they, uh, I say, okay, I would have used um, a character die to get Aragorn into Dol Golder. Now that'll be great. And, um, and then they would be playing. Uh, so they do a attack on the outside. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't have had time to get Aragorn out there, but we're like, we're now in sort of fictional land uh, where I would have. So I, they, they attack using some, some imaginary die. And um, I say field battle first because I have uh, too many units. I might as well use up some and I'll play daylight so that, um, you know, I will be able to dish out some damage back to them. They have this dread and despair. They have been saving this for a very long time. I'm quite impressed with them. This is a great use of it. I mean, this is exactly why you'd like uh, Gandalf to be down there. And maybe if I had more character dice, I would have moved, started to move Gandalf down towards um, Dol Golder as well, but it is a, um, you know, great use of the leadership they have, they have here. I mean, look at this army. This is seven elites and three regulars with all the factions and the witch king. So, um, and look at this army. I mean, this is amazing. This is just an amazing army. So anyway, um, I play daylight because at most they can get three hits and then I'll have exactly the right number to go into siege. So they do, uh, in fact, get three hits, uh, and uh, I get my one. So that's nice, at least. I did one damage to them before I go into Siege. So now I'm in Siege, and then um, and then I what do I do? I'm just... Uh, oh, right, I play Scouts, because I, I play Spirit of Mordor, because I've been saving this for a while. So I go ahead and play that. Uh, sorry, I hadn't been saving it for a while, but I knew that I was going to get to play it as a defensive card against this army to whittle them down. And um, I get three hits. So that is definitely above average on that. And then they counter that by playing... Um, uh, oh, sorry. They draw a card and then they counter it by playing Uluk High. And now we're imagining... So we're imagining they had like two extra attacks, something like that. Um, and so then they start the battle uh, with Fighting Urukai. 
So, um, so we have this uh, 15 hit point army with the Witch King against this nine hit point army with three companions in it. And um, I have some incredible cards. I have Brave Stand, Heroic Death, Charge, and Valor. So um, I am, you know, they get three free presses from Fighting Urkai. And again, we're in fictional land, but just, you know, in case, you know, it's nice to see. So uh, they start with strategy cards. So I'm going to play my Brave Stand. They play Mumakil, right? Great card. Uh, Brave Stand is going to take care of that. Uh, they get no hits and I get no hits. <laughs> so uh, much less likely for me to get no hits on 10 dice than for them to get no hits on four dice. Uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. And um, and then they get to redraw and I don't, uh, which is sad for me. They play another strategy card and I'm going to go ahead and play my charge here because I want to get full benefit out of the four elites before they get reduced. Um, and so I play my charge. I get one hit on the charge, slightly below average, but still fine. Um, and then they get two hits on the desperate battle and I get uh, three hits back. And, um, you know, I think these are pretty average expected rolls. Uh, I still have some elites left, which I'm happy about so that I can play Valor here. Um, they play Dread and Despair, which is just a beautiful play. I mean, they had great card play there. Um, because, you know, otherwise the Valor could have done, you know, an extra hit at least. Uh, so nice use of Dread and Despair again. I wish I had Gandalf in there because then these Dread and Despairs don't work. Uh, they get two hits on their 10 dice and uh, I get at least one on my Valor. And we're down to five regulars against uh, five elites. And uh, then what happens here? They play a strategy card, which I guess is going to be Relentless Assault. And of course, I play my Heroic Death. Um, and they do use their Relentless Assault. Uh, I guess they're using two. Yep. Yeah. And now they get four hits, which is very good on the Relentless Assault. A little above average, I think. Um, not much above average, but a little bit above average. And, um, and then I get four hits back, which is obviously good for me. And uh, I can lose Aragorn. So Aragorn soaks up three hits. I'm left with four regulars still rolling five dice with four leadership against three regulars. Um, and that's how that battle plays out. So again, it didn't actually happen. I already won the game because they had a really bad action dice roll. But it just goes to show you if you build up a big army, um, you can take out a stronghold and still hold, uh, which was pretty awesome. So that was the alternate version in which I still won, <laughs> which is nice, but at least it was a more exciting finish uh, than just sort of petering out because of the action dice. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let's look at the statistics. So um, these are reversed. I don't remember why. I think if I view their hand first, then it gets reversed, but they were actually uh, plus four on sixes and I was minus one on sixes and they did roll a few more combat dice than me. Um, you can see I was minus five on character dice and plus four on Palantirs. I did in the end make it up with a bunch of uh, army musters, which certainly served me well in the end. Um, so you know, this was a this was a really interesting game. I think it just goes to show you 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 maintain your hope, you uh, see what the dice give you, see what the cards give you, and uh, I ended up taking four shadow strongholds that game, <laughs> uh, including Dol Golder twice. So uh, I don't recall a time that I've taken Dol Golder twice in a game. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a good rest of the day.